Hey Crossropers, Crossrope Athlete Chad here, and today I wanted to talk about shin splints. It is something that a lot of jump ropers get at the very beginning. I got them at the beginning of my time starting jumping rope, and if I would have known a few of these tips that we're going to go over in this video, that I might have been able to decrease the chances of getting the shin splints that I got, or I may have been able to recover quicker and uh, be able to jump sooner. So we're gonna go over four things that will help you in your jump rope journey in regards to shin splints, whether it's avoiding them altogether. If you have them now, then I hope it's going to help you uh, ease that pain, keep them away after you can uh, rest and recover, and keep them from coming back. So first things first, uh, you should know that jump rope, the form, it's a low impact movement. We don't need to jump very high, but along the lines, that first tip is also the surface we are jumping on. So we don't wanna grab that rope and think right out of the gate. It's an easy enough skill to pick up that we can just jump on any surface at the park, in the driveway, uh, on the trails, but these are harder surfaces. The concrete, the asphalt, these hard surfaces are not gonna be very beginner friendly on the joints, especially a new thing like jumping rope that your body is not used to. The surface is going to play a big factor. So what we really stress, not only to protect your ropes, but a mat. I got the cross rope LE mat here providing a little bit of cushion here and will also protect the ropes. But the whole floor underneath my cross rope LE mat is rubber horse stall mats. They're rubber mats that you might see in a gym. So they are great to help absorb the shock and really protect the joints and can help with those shin splints. But as soon as you get on that concrete, the asphalt, those tougher surfaces, they will not be very friendly to the jump rope no matter how low impact you keep it. There's a reason why if you go to retail stores you see a lot of the cashiers standing on the anti-fatigue mats. Standing on concrete all day isn't even as good on those joints. You want to have a mat to help protect those joints and keep those shin splints away. On the other end we want to talk about mats. Um, we think, all right, we don't want the hard surface, but what if we go to a softer surface? That was actually my issue. I thought I could jump rope in the living room, and I had really thick carpet with thick carpet pad. So what was happening is, as I was jumping, instead of landing softly on the balls of the feet here and being able to spring right back up, the carpet was absorbing my landing and making it so I had to push up a lot harder with my feet to get off the carpet. And that actually was something that helped keep my shins uh, in pain as I was trying to jump through that shin pain, not knowing that it was shin splints that I was developing. So we don't want too hard of a surface, but also avoid you know thick carpet, really soft surfaces early on because you want to be able to have that nice soft bounding that we can bound right back up and not have a cushion surface allow us to sink in too much and you really have to push off that soft surface to continue your bound. So that's tip number one is be mindful of your mat, your surface, so that you can protect those joints. All right, tip number two is all about compression. If I would have known right off the bat to jump with compression, there are three different kinds that I use now, compression pants, I have compression sleeves that go over the calves and compression socks that will also provide that nice compression over the shins and the calves. All these things help keep that blood flow to the calf area. They help while you're jumping, but also afterwards to help in the recovery process, help with inflammation. Again, it's all promoting that good blood flow to the muscles so that they can recover. I, Early on when I first started with compression, I would not jump without them and I could tell with my calves and my shins when I did jump without them. So once I started incorporating compression into every single jump session that I had, 
I was reliant on them, and I was pretty much pain-free in the shin area when I wore them. When I didn't wear them again, I knew it, my shins were telling me, and I would have to cut that jump rope session shorter knowing that I didn't want to jump through that pain. After time, maybe a good year to a year and a half of jumping with compression pretty much every time, I did develop that strength, that tolerance, and now I no longer have to jump with the compression every time. But for a good year, I was using that compression every time, whether it was those socks, those compression pants, or those compression sleeves. Something I would highly recommend if you're a beginner jumper and you are struggling with that shin pain. All right, tip number three has to do with our recovery tools. Something you see a lot of the times promoted with jump ropers is that foam roller. Love to foam roll those calves as you see in the video there. It can hurt so good, but it definitely promotes what you need to break down those muscles and get them nice and recovered. Give them that nice massage on the calves. One thing that I also did was a golf ball to the bottom of the foot. All the time I was rolling out the bottom of the feet on the golf ball. Also something that I found helped me in recovery during those shin splints, making sure that I was giving those muscles the attention they needed so that they could recover quickly and I could jump another day. All right, lastly, we made it to tip number four, the end of the video here. This one's gotta be the most important one, and that is realizing when you just need to shut it down and rest. There were plenty of times in my early on stages of jumping rope, I was trying to get that crisscross. I could not put the ropes down. I was trying to do the crisscross in alternate foot fashion, and so that was a lot of weight coming down on a single foot all the time, and I would not stop. I was so close to stringing those together that I would not stop jumping. I had to finally realized that I just need to hide the ropes, put them in a room, lock the door, tell a family member, don't let me in that room. No matter how much I plead, my body needs a rest. And so that's what I hope that you can do early on in your jump rope journey, is that you can take those rest days, let the body recover, ice if you need to, compression on the rest days, and really just rest that body and that will also help keep those shin splints away. You don't want overuse injuries, and sometimes shin splints can definitely be an overuse injury, and they may not have come if you just allowed yourself a few more rest days or cutting your workout short versus going that extra 10 minutes, 15 minutes, trying to get that combo, that trick, or that PR. So hopefully that helps. Those four tips with shin splints Going back to those that were the surface, make sure you have a nice rubber mat. Uh, wood floors are good. Wood gym floors are generally pretty padded for basketball gyms. Uh, the cross rope LE mat. Compression for tip number two, something I swore by early on. Your recovery tools is tip number three, the foam roller, the massage guns, golf balls, uh, Theracanes, whatever those may be that help you recover. And lastly, make sure you are taking those rest days and trying to avoid those overuse injuries. Thanks for joining me on today's topic. And until next time, more content coming soon.